Claude Leffert, French, Elf, the 21st of April 1924 to the 3rd of October 2010, was a French philosopher and activist. He was politically active by 1942 under the influence of his tutor, the phenomenologist Maurice Merleau-Ponty whose posthumous publications Leffert later edited. By 1943 he was organizing a faction of the Trotskyist Party Communist Internationalist at the Lycée Henri IV in Paris. Leffert was impressed by Cornelius Castoriadis when he first met him. From 1946 he collaborated with him in the Cholou Montel tendency, so called from their pseudonyms Pierre Cholou and Claude Montel They published On the Regime and Against the Defense of the USSR, a critique of both the Soviet Union and its Trotskyist supporters. They suggested that the USSR was dominated by a social layer of bureaucrats, and that it consisted of a new kind of society as aggressive as Western European societies. By 1948, having tried to persuade other Trotskyists of their viewpoint, they broke away with about a dozen others and founded the libertarian socialist group Socialisme au Barbary. Leffert's text L'Experens Proletarienne was important in shifting the group's focus towards forms of self-organization. For a time Leffert wrote for both the journal Socialisme au Barbary and for Les Temps Modernes. His involvement in the latter journal ended after a published debate during 1952-4 over Jean-Paul Sartre's article The Communists and Peace. Leffert was for a long time uncomfortable with Socialisme au Barbary's organizationalist tendencies. In 1958 he, Henri Simon and others left Socialisme au Barbary and formed the group Informations et Liaison Ouvrières Workers Information and Liaison. In his academic career, Leffert taught at the University of São Paulo, at the Sorbonne and at the École des Hautes Études and Sciences Sociales being affiliated to the Centre de Recherches Politiques Raymond Aron. He has written on the early political writers Niccolò Machiavelli and Étienne de la Boétie and explored the totalitarian enterprise in its denial of social division and of the difference between the order of power, the order of law and the order of knowledge. Biography Leffert studied at the Sorbonne. He became a Marxist in his youth under the influence of his teacher, Maurice Merleau-Ponty. From 1944, he belonged to the small French Trotskyite. In 1946, he met Cornelius Castoriadis who came to Paris from Greece. Right away, they formed a faction in the Trotskyist Party Communist Internationalist called Cholou Montel Tendency. That left the party and became the Socialism or Barbarism Group and which, in 1949, started a journal with this name. Socialism or Barbarism considered the USSR to be an example of state capitalism and gave its support to anti-bureaucratic revolts in Eastern Europe especially the uprising in Budapest in 1956. Differences of opinion brought about a schism within socialism or barbarism, and Leffert sided with Henri Simon, one of the founders of the Group Informations et Liaison Ouvrières Workers Information and Liaison, later renamed Informations et Correspondence Ouvrières Workers Information and Correspondence, in 1958. That year he abandoned the idea and ideology of political revolution and ceased his militant activism, after having worked amongst other places, in 1947 and 1948 for UNESCO. In 1949 Leffert passed the aggregation in philosophy, he taught at the high school in Nimes 1950 and in Reims 1951. In 1951, he was recruited as a sociology assistant at the Sorbonne by Georges Gervich. In the year 1952, following a dispute with Gervich, he was detached from the sociology section of the CNRS, until 1966, with a break of two years 1953-1954, when he was professor of philosophy at University of São Paulo Brazil. As for the CNRS, the support of Raymond Aron led to his recruitment as a teacher of sociology at the University of Caen, where he worked from 1966 to 1971, the year when he defended as his doctoral thesis his book on Machiavelli, The Labor of Work. That same year, he was again hired as a researcher in the sociology section of the CNRS until 1976, when he joined the École des Hautes Études and Sciences Sociales, where he stayed until his retirement in 1989. The intellectual work of Leffert is strongly tied to his participation, often tension-filled, in successive journals. With Les Temps Modernes, Modern Times, 
Introduced by Merleau-Ponty, he took part in the "...gatherings of collaborators," and wrote from 1945 until his debate with J. P. Sartre in 1953. In Socialism or Barbarism which lasted from 1949 to 1967 and of which he was the co-founder, he was active until 1950, then from 1955 to 1958. He was involved in Textures established in 1969 from 1971 to the end 1975 and there he brought in Castoriadis and Miguel Abensor. With them as well as Pierre Clasters and Marcel Gaucher, he created Libre in 1977, which was published up until 1980, when there were some disagreements with Castoriadis as well as with Gaucher. From 1982 to 1984, he led Passé Present where amongst others Miguel Abensor, Carlos Sempran Mora, Claude Mouchard and Pierre Pache participated. These last two as well as Claude Habib formed the reading committee of the Literature et Politique that Leffert founded for the publisher Editions Bielan in 1987. No doubt he assigned less importance to the research centers at which he had participated in EHESS, the CECMAS Center of the Study of Mass Communication, founded by Georges Friedman and which welcomed Edgar Morin, then the Center Aaron, which he frequented just before his death. When Merleau-Ponty died in 1961, Leffert took charge of the publication of his manuscripts. In the 1970s, he developed an analysis of bureaucratic regimes of Eastern Europe. He read the Gulag Archipelago and published a book on Alexander Solzhenitsyn. His main ideas on Stalinist totalitarianism were published in 1981 in a collection titled L'Invention Démocratique. Topic. Philosophical work. Topic. Conception of totalitarianism Leffert was part of the political theorists who put forward the relevance of a notion of totalitarianism which was relevant to Stalinism as well as fascism, and considered totalitarianism as different in its essence from the big categories used in the Western world since ancient Greece, like the notions of dictatorship or tyranny. However, contrary to the authors like Hannah Arendt who limited the notion to Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union between 1936 and 1953, Leffert applied it to the regimes of Eastern Europe in the second half of the century, that is, to an era when terror, a central element of totalitarianism for the other authors, had lost its most extreme dimensions. It is in the study of these regimes, and the reading of the Gulag Archipelago 1973 by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, where he developed his analysis of totalitarianism. Topic. The Double Fence Society Leffert characterizes the totalitarian system by a double fence. Totalitarianism abolishes the separation between state and society, the political power permeates society, and all pre-existing human relations, class solidarity, professional or religious cooperations, tend to be replaced with a one-dimensional hierarchy between those who order and those who obey. This is made possible especially through the association between state and the party hierarchy which is always very close, so that the party hierarchy becomes the effective power. Leffert, like other theorists, thus identifies the destruction of public space and its fusion with the political power as a key element of totalitarianism. Totalitarianism denies what Leffert calls the principle of internal divisions of society, and its conception of society is marked by the affirmation of the totality. Every organization, association or profession is thus subordinated to the planning of the state. The differences of opinion, one of the values of democracy, is abolished so that the entire social body is directed towards the same goal, even personal tastes become politicized and must be standardized. The aim of totalitarianism is to create a united and a closed society, in which the components are not individuals and which is defined completely by the same goals, the same opinions and the same practices. Stalinism thus knew the identification of the people to the proletariat, of the proletariat to the party, of the party to the management, of the management to the agocrate. Leffert demonstrates the central difference between totalitarianism and dictatorship. A dictatorship can admit competing transcendental principles, like religion, the ideology of the totalitarian party is religion. 
A dictatorship does not aim for the destruction and absorption of society, and a dictatorial power is a power of the state against society, that presupposes the distinction of the two. The plan of a totalitarian party is to merge state with society in a closed, united, and uniform system, subordinated under the fulfillment of a plan, socialism, in the case of the USSR. Leffert calls this system, people one. The process of identification of power and society, the process of homogenization of the social space, the process of the closing up of society and the authority to enchain it in order to constitute the totalitarian system. The organicist vision of society The totalitarian system, unified and organized, presents itself like a body, the social body. Dictatorship, bureaucracy and apparatus need a new system of bodies." Leffert returns to the theories of Ernst Kantarevich on the two bodies of the king, in which the person of the totalitarian leader, besides his physical and mortal body, is a political body representing the one people. In order to ensure its proper functioning and to maintain its unity, the totalitarian system requires another, the evil other a representation of the exterior, the enemy, against which the party combats, the representative of the forces of the old society kulaks, bourgeois. The emissary of the stranger, of the imperialistic world. The division between the interior and the exterior, between the one people and the other, is the only division that totalitarianism tolerates, since it is founded upon this division. Leffert insists on the fact that the constitution of the one people necessitates the incessant production of enemies, and also speaks of their invention. For example, Stalin prepared to attack the Jews of USSR when he died, i.e., designing a new enemy, and in the same way, Mussolini had declared that bourgeois would be eliminated in Italy after World War II. The relation between the one people and the other is a prophylactic command, the enemy is a parasite to eliminate, a waste. This exceeds the simple rhetorical effect that was commonly used in the contemporary political discourse, yet in an underlying way it is part of the metaphorical vision of the totalitarian society as a body. This vision explained how the existence both of enemies of the state and their presence in the bosom of the population, were seen as an illness. The violence roused against them was, in this organicist metaphor, a fever, a symptom of the fight of the social body against the illness, in the sense that the campaign against the enemy is feverish, the fever is good, it's the sign, in the society, of the evil to counteract." The situation of the totalitarian leader within this system is paradoxical and uncertain, for he is at the same time a part of the system, its head, who commands the rest, and the representation of the system, everything. He is therefore the incarnation of the one power, i.e., the power executed in all parts of the one people. The fragility of the system Leffert didn't consider totalitarianism as a situation almost as an ideal type, which could potentially be realized through terror and extermination. He rather sees in it a set of processes which have endings that cannot be known, thus their success cannot be determined. If the will of the totalitarian party to realize the perfect unity of the social body controls the magnitude of its action, it also implies that the goal is impossible to achieve because its development necessarily leads to contradictions and oppositions. Totalitarianism is a regime with a prevailing sense of being gnawed away by the absurdity of its own ambition total control by the party and the active or passive resistance of those subjected to it," summarized the political scientist Dominique Colas. Topic. Conception of democracy Claude Leffert formulates his conception of democracy by mirroring his conception of totalitarism, developing it in the same way by analyzing regimes of Eastern Europe and USSR. For Leffert democracy is the system characterized by the institutionalization of conflict within society, the division of social body, it recognizes and even considers legitimate the existence of divergent interests, conflicting opinions, visions of the world that are opposed and even incompatible. Leffert's vision makes the disappearance of the leader as a political body, the putting to death of the king, as Kantarevich calls it, the founding moment of democracy because it makes the seat of power, hitherto occupied by an eternal substance transcending the mere physical existence of monarchs, into an empty space, 
where groups with shared interests and opinions can succeed each other, but only for a time and at the will of elections. Power is no longer tied to any specific program, goal, or proposal, it is nothing but a collection of instruments put temporarily at the disposal of those who win a majority. In Leffert's invented and inventive democracy, writes Dominique Colas, power comes from the people and belongs to no one. Democracy is thus a regime marked by its vagueness, its incompleteness, against which totalitarianism establishes itself. This leads Leffert to regard as democratic every form of opposition and protest against totalitarianism. The opposition and protest creates, in a way, a democratic space within the totalitarian system. Democracy is innovation, the start of new movements, the designation of new issues in the struggle against oppression, it is a creative power capable of weakening, even slaying the totalitarian leviathan." A leviathan whose paradoxical frailty Leffert emphasizes. The separation of civil society from the state, which characterizes modern democracy, is made possible by the disembodiment of society. A democratic country can also experience this inventive character when any group of citizens with a legitimate struggle may seek to establish new rights or defend its interests. Leffert does not reject representative democracy, but does not limit democracy to it. For instance, he includes the social movements in the sphere of legitimate political debate. Publications La Breche, en collaboration avec Edgar Morin, P. Caudray Pseudonymi de Cornelius Castoriadis, Fayard, Paris, 1968. Alamance d'une critique de la bureaucratie, Droz, Geneva, 1971. Second edition with Gallimard, Paris, 1979. The Age of Novelty. Telos 29, Fall 1976. Telos Press, New York. Le Travail de l'Herve, Machiavel, Gallimard, Paris, 1972. Republic Call. Tel, 1986. Un homme en trop. Essay sur l'archipel du Gulag de Solzhenitsyn, Le Suil, Paris, 1975 Republique, Le Suil Poch 1986. Les Formes de la Histoire, Gallimard, Paris, 1978. Sur une colonne absente. Autour de Merleau-Ponty, Gallimard, Paris, 1978. L'invention démocratique. Les limites de la domination totalitaire, Fayard, Paris, 1981. Essays sur la politique, XIXE et XXE siècles, Suil, Paris, 1986. Acrié à l'épreuve du politique, Calman Lévy, Paris, 1992. La complication, Fayard, Paris, 1999. Les formes de la histoire. Essays d'anthropologie politique, Gallimard, Paris, Folio Essays, 2000. Le temps présent, Bilan, Paris, 2007. Topic. English translations The Political Forms of Modern Society, Bureaucracy, Democracy, Totalitarianism MIT Press, 1986 Democracy and Political Theory MIT Press, 1989 Writing, The Political Test Duke University Press, 2000 Complications, Communism and the Dilemmas of Democracy Columbia University Press, 2007 Machiavelli in the Making Northwestern University Press 2012 Proletarian Experience 1952 Viewpoint Magazine 3 September 2013 Topic References Topic Sources <references> <references>